And now it's time for your Wednesday Word with JoLynn Whitaker. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Wednesday Word. I am so excited that you have tuned in to get this week's message. Now, there is a fresh word from the Lord. I am so uh, just encouraged by it, and I can't wait to give it to you so that you can be encouraged as well. My name is Prophet JoLynn Whitaker. This is our weekly Wednesday Word. Let's go ahead and get right into it. The title of this week's message is Your Three-Part power strategy, your three-part power strategy. You know, the Lord spoke to me recently and he told me that too many of us continue to, to grapple with the same issues uh, for far too long and we're just dancing with the same thing over and over again. And he said, JoLynn, I want you to tell the people about this three-part power strategy that can help them immediately, a tool they can use immediately to what? To press in to victory. You see, you did not come this far to only come this far, and you are certainly not going to allow the devil to stop you now. Uh, Short of your goals, short of your destiny, short of your dreams, the devil is a liar. Let's together utilize this three-part power strategy and press in to victory. Amen? Let me go ahead and give this to you the exact way the Lord gave it to me. God said that we need to use this three-part power strategy freely, authoritatively, and consistently. Uh, And the strategy is this. Part one is prayer. Part two is praise. Part three is worship. And the Lord was very specific. He said, do not Do not subtract one of those from the equation. This is a three-part equation. It is a three-part power strategy. You can't take out one and have it function the same. All three must be present together in order for this strategy to work like the weapon I have designed it to be. I said, my goodness, Lord, you've got my attention already. Now, God uh, broke it down for me in this capacity. He said that when you pray, you begin to enter the reality of God as the atmosphere shifts. Let me say that again. When you pray, you begin to enter the reality of God as the atmosphere shifts. What do I mean by that? I mean, the more you pray, the longer you pray, you're five minutes into it, 10 minutes into it, 15, 20, 20, 30 minutes into your prayer session there in your prayer closet or wherever you like to pray. And now you've prayed so much that you sense the atmosphere shifting around you and you begin to, to shift into where God is. You begin to tune in and to access the reality of God. See, what's happening is that you are tuning out of your reality here in the physical and you are accessing God's reality in the spiritual. And that changes everything. When you begin to access the reality of God and re- and align yourself with the reality of God, now much is available to you. There is strategy available to you in that elevated realm. There is strategy available to you, perspective available to you that you can only get from God. So when you shift from where you are in the physical to align yourself with the reality of God in the spiritual, that is an incredibly powerful thing. The Lord then went on to say that as you praise, as you praise him, as you just pour out your praise to the Father, you stir the Lord's protective love for you. Let me say that again. As you praise him, as you pour out your praise to him, lift up your voice and just praise his name, that stirs his protective love for you. That, that, that just awakens his heart. You, you got to see uh, the Lord the way he is in this capacity. He is your heavenly father. He sees you in a very parental way. He is protective over you. You are his child. He is your heavenly daddy. And when you praise him, that stirs his protective love for you. And then the third component, the worship. God said, when you worship him, 
When you worship him, that means all the other names have faded away and you are focused on him, which is what he wants. We're going to go to the Bible. I'm going to back all this up with scripture, of course. But God said when you worship him, that demonstrates your commitment and your loyalty to him. Therefore, together, this power equation, this three-part power strategy moves the Lord to act on your behalf, thereby shifting you into victory. The Lord then went on to say this, and I just want to take a moment and share this with you. He said that not every battle requires aggressive warfare. He said not every battle, not every battle uh, in, in requires for you to just get suited up and booted up and just go to war in some aggressive warfare. He said, no, not always. You must use discernment because sometimes what you need to do in order to get your victory, listen, is to entreat the heart and the hand of the Father. See, it's not going to be by might or by power anyway, but by His Spirit that you're going to get the victory. So there are some times you can just save your energy and just entreat the heart and the hand of the Father. How do you do it? Utilizing this three-part power strategy. Prayer, praise, and worship. All together, prayer, praise, and worship. Let's break them down individually very briefly. When we look at prayer, I want to draw your attention to Psalm chapter 34, verse 15. It says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. Wow. So the Lord, his eyes are on you. He sees you. Listen, can I give you a word? Here's a word for everybody who feels like you are alone in this world. You feel like God doesn't hear you. You feel like God doesn't listen to you. Can I tell you that is the exact opposite of the truth. The devil is a liar and we need to cast down that imagination right now in the mighty name of Jesus because the Bible assures you that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Listen, if you're in good standing with God, if you are faithful and, and obedient to God, you can be guaranteed that his eyes are on you. He's watching you. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. And his ears are attentive to your cry. Oh my goodness, isn't that a comforting fact? Isn't that a comforting thing to know? His ears are attentive to your cry. Listen to what the prophet Daniel said in Daniel 9 and 18. He said, we do not make requests of you because we're righteous, but because of your great mercy. Oh my goodness. So, so prayer, you are just entreating the heart of God based on his mercy. And sometimes you simply need to go to the Lord and just lay everything at his feet and say, Lord, I thank you that your mercy is fresh every day. God, I thank you that I am able to request your mercy right now. God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my situation. Father, I am entreating your mercy according to Daniel 9 and 18. Again, these are powerful prayers to pray. Psalm chapter five, verse nine, in the, and this is the Psalmist David writing. It says, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Wait in expectation. I want to encourage you to begin starting your day with prayer, just like the Psalmist David did. Begin to start your day with prayer. And if you, if you don't remember, the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. And this is the way David started his day. Begin to start your day with prayer. Begin to rise up and let the first words out of your mouth be um, prayerful expressions to your God. Lay it all at his feet. Lay your requests and your petitions at his feet, just like David did. And then what? And then wait in expectation, fully expecting for him to hear you, fully expecting for him to respond to you, fully expecting to see something happen in your life. God is moved by that kind of faith. He is moved by that kind of trust. We live in a world of people who just completely reject God. They have no faith in him. They don't trust him. They don't believe that he can answer prayers. They don't believe that he hears them, but you do. That will move the heart of the Father. 
lay your requests at him first thing in the morning at his feet and then wait in expectation just like David did. First John chapter five, verse, four, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, watch this, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Mm. It is a powerful thing to do. And I can tell you from experience, it is powerful to pray according to God's will, to lay your requests at his feet, to, to, to just put it all down before him, before the throne, and then say, but God, not my will, but yours. Not my will, but yours, God. Your will be done. It's a powerful thing when you do that and you give God that level of authority in your life to act according to his will. And can I give you a word? That is when many of you are going to begin to see amazing things manifest in your life. The right relationships, the right opportunities, the, the right friendships, the right, the right spouse. Come on, the, the right, um, the right door, doors opening, the right connections. Why? because you have invited God's will to manifest in your life. And Jeremiah 29 11 says it very plainly, God has plans for you and they are good plans. When the Lord's will is done in your life, it is always the best for you. There are things that God has planned for you, things that he wants for you that, that will just blow your mind. When you pray prayers like that and you say, God, your will be done in my life, that's when you need to get ready and expect for simply amazing things to begin to manifest. And why? Because James 5, 16 B says it all. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent prayer. Oh, that means a passionate prayer. That means you're getting into it. That means you've been praying long enough uh, so that you, you are no longer alone. Come on, you feel the Holy Spirit in your midst. It's a fervent prayer. It's a passionate prayer. It's going to have some effect. It's going to take effect. There's going to be outcomes. Much is going to be available to, to the person who prays that type of prayer. The second aspect in this uh, power, three-part power strategy is praise. Praise. Now, praise is different than prayer. Praise is different than prayer. When you praise God, you simply exalt him. You exalt his name. You give him glory. You give him honor. You give him praise. First Chronicles chapter 16, 23 through 31. We're not going to read the entire passage. That's a lot of scripture, but I want to encourage you to go read it when you have a chance. It is a wonderful breakdown of how to praise the Lord. It says here, we do so in singing. We proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. You praise him. It says you, you, you tell of his glory. You tell of his wonderful deeds. You say how great he is. You say how greatly he is to be praised. And that is praising the Lord. You say how he is to be feared. How all the other gods are simply idols. They can't talk. They can't do anything. They, they're not even real. They're false. But you, God, you are real. You are powerful powerful. You are mighty. You are amazing. You are magnificent. You are to be feared. You are to be worshiped. You are to be praised. That's praising the Lord. And when you do that, oh, he loves it. And why? Exactly what we just said. This world is full compliments of the devil. This world is full of false gods, false idols, false religions, false spirituality denying the power thereof. But when you praise the real God, when you give him the glory that he deserves, when you give him the praise that he deserves, come on, he made this planet. He made you. He, he crafted this planet out of nothing. He crafted you out of nothing. When you give him the praise he deserves, that stirs him. That stirs him. So I want to encourage you to praise God. Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 through 6 is another wonderful example of how to praise God. In that passage, um, we, we see the Lord talking about 
what he has done for the people. He's, he's recounting for them all of the amazing things he did when he saved them. And it really reveals to us very clearly that God likes that. He wants you to acknowledge what he's done for you. He wants you to acknowledge that it is he who saved you. He wants you to acknowledge that it is he who saved your child. It is he who healed you. It is he who prospered you. It is he who gave you the strategy for the business. It's he who did it. He wants you to praise him for all that he has already done. And can I give you a word? There is nothing more powerful than praising him for what he has already done to motivate him to do something brand new for you. Oh, when he can find a person who praises him and acknowledges him for everything he has done. Oh, that's a grateful person. That's a person who has real gratitude in their heart. That's a person that he wants to further bless. Praise him for what he has done in the past and that will encourage him and entreat him to bless you afresh in the present and in the future. Hallelujah to Jesus. And then of course, in John chapter four, verses 23 and 24, Jesus himself said, but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth, we're talking about praise and worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Psalm 99 verses 1 through 5, once again, just exalting him, just praising him, just lifting up his name and just singing and speaking of his greatness and his glory and his power and his might and who he is and how greatly he deserves to be praised. And then we switch into worship we switch into worship. Now worship is when you just give him your adoration. You are bowing beneath him to worship him. You are bowing down to worship and you are just adoring him. Revelation chapter four, verses eight through 11. It says this, and the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings are full of eyes around and within, watch this, and all day and night they do not cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him and they begin to do the same thing, worship. They're worshiping, they're worshiping, they're worshiping. Verse 11, Worthy are you, our Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things because of your will. They existed and were created worship, worshiping him. And then later in Revelation 7, verse 11, we see angels worshiping around the throne, worshiping him, simply worshiping the Lord. Praise God. But let me tell you, you got to make it authentic. God will be able to detect counterfeit or stale worship or worship that is not real. It's not authentic. He will be able to attack that, detect that in a heartbeat. Isaiah 29, 13 says this. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules. They've been taught. They were not authentic in their worship and the Lord knew it. You want to be authentic. You want to be authentic. Can I, can I help you and just encourage you real quick? As you begin to worship, initially it might not feel natural. Initially it might feel a little clumsy. You may find yourself at a loss for words to say. Well, in that case, I want to encourage you to just go to your Bible and read out loud the verses I have given you. But let me encourage you because the longer you do it, stay with it. Uh, not just five minutes. Now, come on, stay with it. And the longer you do it, you will find yourself getting right into a frenzy. 
you will find the Holy Spirit just showing up and just and just boosting you for you. It'll be like a power boost, like like a power boost. You'll find the Holy Spirit just giving you that boost, and you'll just find it bubbling up out of your mouth. Come on, and so then then it's authentic, and that is the kind of worship the Lord desires. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. It says, therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Psalm 86, nine through 10, all nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord. They shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Worship. Worship. He deserves the worship, and he wants to be worshipped. Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. Again, we're not going to read the whole thing, but that is a wonderful passage. I encourage you to read it when you get a chance. A wonderful passage about worship, showing how to worship God and what he what he likes to to receive. So he said, just in closing, that we must use this three-part power strategy with authority and with consistency. Use it freely, use it authoritatively, and use it consistently. Make it be a part of your Christian lifestyle. Prayer, praise, and worship. Prayer, praise, and worship. And let's not forget, this was given to me by the Lord as a three-part power strategy to help you get the victory. Listen, is there something that you're dealing with in your life right now and you really need a breakthrough? You really need God to show up. And, and, and listen, he may, not, he may not give you exactly what you want, but you just want God to, to bring peace to your life. You want him to bring blessing to your life. You want his will to be done in your life. You need resolution in your life. You need a breakthrough. You want to you wanna employ this three-part power strategy, prayer, praise, and worship. Prayer, praise, and worship. Do not eliminate any of them. Start out with prayer. Go into praising him. Let it flow right into worship. Amen. And wa just wait and see. Just watch and see what begins to happen in your life when you use this weapon, this three-part power weapon, when you begin to use it. And again, as you pray, you shift into the reality of God. As you praise, you will stir the Lord's protective love for you. And when you worship, you display your loyalty. All three of those things together form a tool, a, a weapon that you can use to entreat the heart of the Father, the hand of the Father, a weapon that will help you to get the victory. Amen. Well, I pray this blessed you. I pray it encouraged you. Let me know if you begin to use this strategy and let me know what happens in your life as a result. I'll be looking for your emails. I love you all very much. I'm praying for you as well. If you need prayer, please feel free to write to my ministry. We are faithful to lift up the name of everyone who writes to us for prayer. Until we meet again, my friend, God bless you. My friends, I am so excited to share with you a brand new resource that I wrote just for you. I wrote this with you in mind. The title is, It's Time to Soar, Essential Biblical Principles to Accelerate Elevation. Why is it that some people elevate and others don't? Why is it that some people elevate very quickly? And why do some people seem to serve God, they love God, they've been faithful to God for years, but they just can't seem to break through a barrier, they can't seem to elevate to the next dimension, to the next level? Are there some steps that they're missing? Are there some things that they don't know? What I've done is I've pulled out of the Bible the principles that I used in my own life, in my ministry, and the principles that I have taught in workshops that have helped people all over the world, and now I want it to help you as well. You need to get your hands on this resource, but I want to tell you, it's not a long book. This is presented intensive style. I want you to take notes. I want you to highlight stuff. I want you to have your Bible in one hand and, and this book in the other hand as you go through 
and begin to really read and digest what the Word of God says regarding your destiny and regarding acceleration, regarding elevation. Amen? So get this resource. You can grab it at jolynwhitaker.org. I know it's going to bless you. I would love to send you a copy. Thank you so much for watching. I would like to invite you to join us for the Seek Him Early prayer call. If you do not yet already, you need to get in on these prayer calls. It takes place every single Wednesday morning, seven o'clock Eastern time. You can call in and participate on the telephone or you can watch the live stream on Periscope. And then of course the Wednesday word, every single Wednesday there's a new word on YouTube. Make sure you catch that. And then the much anticipated Sunday Relevant Church service every Sunday, four o'clock Eastern time. And we do stream live on both YouTube and Periscope. If you have not yet gotten a copy of my book, Stepping Into Favor, I would love to get a copy into your hands. The praise reports have been blessing my socks off. People are aligning with the Word of God, stepping into favor, experiencing positive, beautiful changes and blessings in their lives. I say that you need to be next. So follow the links on my website. I would love to send you a copy.